It's a city where anything can happen. So what could go wrong or right as I hit up LA Unscripted. <laughs> The glamour, it is Hollywood's biggest night and steps away from the Dolby Theater, we're counting down to the 93rd Academy Awards from the luxurious Lowe's Hollywood Hotel. Hi everyone, from the heart of Hollywood, I'm Dana Devon. And if you wanna know what it feels like to be an A-list Oscar nominee, just check in here. Lowe's is known for giving every guest the celebrity treatment. I mean, look at this baller suite, piano, private kitchen. I'd take a room key here over a statue of a naked dude named Oscar any day. And since we consider you guys the stars, joining us now is Reggie Dominique, Managing Director for Lowe's Hotels with a very special envelope. Hi, Reggie. Hi, Dana. Thank you so much for letting us in this beautiful suite. Absolutely. What is it about Lowe's that is so special that has people coming back year after year? I really think it's about the, uh, the connection our team members make with their guests. I think that makes all the difference in the world. I could not agree more, especially everyone I've met so far. Now, it looks like you have a golden envelope here. Are you giving away an Oscar? Dana, your viewers are gonna be the real winners here okay. tonight, okay? So uh, what we're providing here is a 50% discount um, on Lowe's.com and the promo code KTLA, and we'd be happy to provide a 50% discount off guest rooms. Oh my God, what a great deal. Thank you, Reggie. Thank you. And I will see you here, because I'm sorry, I'm not leaving. And don't be surprised if I'm still in my gown because I absolutely love it. And trust me, finding this gorgeousness and getting red carpet ready is not easy, unless you have a secret style smart weapon named Anya Sar. I think this is really cool. I can't breathe. I'm turning blue. There might be some things we have to like, uh, like tighten here, but otherwise I actually really, really like it. This is a once in a lifetime. It really is. And it fits like a glove. Okay, Anya, I have known you for a number of years now, and I have to say, you never disappoint. You did it again. Thank you so much for dressing me. Thank you for letting me and trusting me I do. to make you into a green goddess like you are today. Now, do you know you're wearing Stello? No. Okay, and Stello Love is- Love you, Stello. Love you, and Stello is Stephanie Costello, who's okay. a local LA designer. Go LA. Now, you couldn't be in better hands. Okay. Ready for the celebs? Yeah, I wanna hear Stella. this, I love this. Okay, Carrie Underwood, Leanne Rimes. People say we sing just alike. Nicki Minaj. Well, Dana, what are your favorite Oscar looks from past? Oh, interesting question. Okay, so um, I will say, I just like it because she really took a risk because back then people didn't wear a lot of see-through stuff. It's right. Barbara Streisand when she was for Funny Girl. I love Julia Roberts when she wore that vintage oh, Valentino. Classic. I love anything Jennifer Lopez wears. I mean, I, if she wore those little things between her toes for a <laughs> pedicure, I would love it. But my all-time favorite, Bjork and the Swan. Dana, I, <laughs> come on. But. You know what I love even more than fashion? TikTok. Oh no. I know, I'm like a 12 year old. I scrolled across a local artist who recreates red carpet looks out of food, candy, fruits, and vegetables. I mean, I had to double tap. I mean, come on, you would too. Anya, you're gonna love this. Uh. I'm a graphic designer turned food stylist and I take fruits, vegetables, anything edible, and plate high fashion looks on celebrity faces. Hi, my name is Ruby Perman, and I'm a food stylist from Dana Point, California. I am absolutely in love with your creations. How in the world did you get the idea to start doing this? During um, the pandemic, when it all started, I was looking for a creative outlet. So I took a photo of myself, I put it on a plate and I made myself this mango dress. And the whole process was so satisfying and therapeutic. Then I started a TikTok account and my first post on there was with Jennifer Lawrence. So the whole dress is made of a whole pomegranate. So the top was the peel and then the dress was the all pomegranate seeds. And I even gave her a pomegranate hat so when I posted that on TikTok, my first post went viral. One of my favorite things to do 
is to watch celebrities on the red carpet. And I just miss watching, you know, them on the Grammys and then the Met Gala and the Academy Awards. I'm just, you know, so obsessed with their big gowns. And so that's one of my inspirations is just watching to see what the celebrities are wearing. So Dana, I have a special surprise for you. For me? She said, what you know about us? Candy! <laughs> oh my God! And I love those candies. I can't believe that I get to be one of your creations. This is like an honor. About to get it when we finally get back on the red carpet, you've actually inspired me. I'm wondering if we can actually make a dress out of candy, a real dress. I'll come and help you do it. All right, coming up, the Oscar nominated dark comedy, Promising Young Woman, and the film noir's LA Connection. Then the sound of stardom, one-on-one -on -one with Oscar nominee, Paul Racy. Plus, your chance to win an award-winning celebrity swag bag when LA Unscripted counts down to gold from the celebrity favorite, Lowe's Hollywood Hotels. considered the entertainment capital of the world. Here, normal neighborhoods are used as blockbuster sets. And if you think that guy over there looks like Idris Elba or another A-list actor, he probably is. So we sent our Olivia de Portoli out for a promising young woman tour of the town. I'm back because um, I think you gave me a, a fake number the other day. It doesn't sound like me. I know. Promising Young Woman has been nominated for five Oscars, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actress. And they didn't hesitate shooting all over LA. I'm taking you on a tour. Do you know who she spoke to? But first, I think I should channel my inner Carrie Mulligan. Now we're ready. One of my favorite scenes in the film takes place right here in downtown Los Angeles at SA Recycling in a very busy industrial part of town. You know what? Not interested, sweetheart. Nah, I want you to take crazy somewhere else. You're not even that hot. Just down the street from SA Recycling in downtown Los Angeles is the Blue Star. In the film, they use it as a nightclub. In reality, it's a restaurant and beer garden serving American classics since 2004. Whoa, this is, this is a weird coincidence. What? I think. No. Yeah, this is my apartment. <laughs> that scene was shot right here in Koreatown. We're here. Do you want to go up, have a drink? Dr. Ryan's apartment is actually a 13-story building on the corner of West 7th and Ardmore. Now, I need my dramatic exit. When you're watching Promising Young Woman, it's almost like you're watching a pop music video on steroids. Okay. Oh, my God. The production designer used neons, lots of pastels, and millennial pink to take you into Cassie's world. But not all is as sweet as it seems. As Carrie Mulligan told Variety Magazine, it's a sort of beautifully wrapped candy, and when you eat it, you realize it's poisonous. Next stop, Boyle Heights. This is St. Louis Drunk Company, which was used as the backdrop for one of the film's most memorable scenes. Oh, you know. Recognize that song? That is Paris Hilton's The Stars Are Blind from 2006. Fun fact, director Emerald Fennell chose that song simply because it was one of her favorites. Film fact, in 2012's Stand Up Guys, the St. Louis Drug Company was robbed by Al Pacino and Christopher Walken. One thing's for sure, promising young woman promises to take you on a wild ride. Also, blonde or brunette? Which one? And you know what was filmed right here at Lowe's Hollywood? Britney Spears' Every Time video. I love that one. Plus KTLA's very own Live from the Red Carpet. Yep, this is where the party is, people. Speaking of, can I have a Oh my God, you're such a good person. Thank you so much. Cheers, you guys. The hotel has served as 
ground zero for the big award show since 2002. As you can imagine, everything is just bustling around here from the weeks leading up to the big night. You'll see celebrities walking in and out through the elevators, winners walking around with their um, big award. So you guys get a lot of celebrities in here, but you treat everyone like they're a celebrity at Lowe's. And every guest here is treated like a VIP here at Lowe's. We have a mantra where we treat people like family, and that really goes to the heart. We treat our guests like family, as well as our employees like family. So truly, if you're Brad Pitt checking in, we treat you the same as we treat our front desk person. Why is it such a fabulous staycation here? I really think it's our location. Number one, I think uh, on the corner of Highland and Hollywood. Best location ever. Clearly, um, that obviously that's a location in proximity to all the live venues, local attractions, theme parks, it's really make it uh, exciting for guests to come stay with us. KTLA has been a partner with you guys at Lowe's for a while, and we've actually set up down in your lobby. How are we as guests? We love having you guys here, and it's always great watching the Oscars with you guys and then hanging out on our H squared um, kitchen and bar downstairs. We have a great F&B team where we specialize in seasonal ingredients, local flavors, and everything is just fresh California fare. Cheers. Cheers. Let's try it, okay. Mmm. Very refreshing. It's delicious, huh? How about another cheers to that? And to the Academy Awards making diversity history. This year, a record nine actors of color are nominated. And now celebrating inclusion, LAU one-on-one -on -one with the history-making two-time Oscar nominee and composer, Terrence Blanchard. It made you feel like you weren't loved. All I can say to you is, I'm sorry I put you through holy hell. That's an all-star cast right there, you know, and what they had done with their portrayals of those characters I thought was just phenomenal. A brother Stormy Normie always commanded us bloods, you love one another. I kept saying to myself, I can't be the weak link in the chain. And with Spike's vision of wanting the score to be something that makes a broader statement allows me to go big with an orchestra. Now here are the nominees for best original score, Five Bloods. He called me up and he said, congratulations. And I said, man, thank you. I said, but you should be right there with me. And he says, listen, man, onward and upward. Let's keep moving forward. We got a new project that we need to work on. And you got to represent. You know what I love about Spike, man? And this has been true for 30 years. Whenever he calls me to do a film, it's like he's doing his first film. He comes at it with an enthusiasm like he just started. One of the things that keeps me inspired. And the meaning is still start, still revealing itself to me because initially it's just a great honor um, to be in this position. But then the other part of it too, you start to think about all of the great composers that have come before me who were eligible for this award and didn't get any recognition. People like Benny Golson, Oliver Nelson, great jazz musicians. Part of my mission as, a, as an artist and as a musician is to create music that can help heal some souls and hearts. One of the things that I love about the genre of music and film, you know, uh, it has the power to shape minds. One of the reasons why I love being a part of this particular form of expression, we still have work to do and we just have to keep moving forward. Next, how local 73-year-old actor went from a sign language interpreter to an Oscar nominee. Plus, the code word to win an Oscar-worthy swag bag, LA Unscripted, the show where you are the star. That's me still eating, I love sugar. Oscar, it is the most recognized trophy in the world. Did you know the gold-plated statue weighs 8.5 pounds and stands 13.5 inches tall? But for the entertainment industry, it is more than just a hunk of metal. Just ask Sound of Metal star, Paul Racy. The nominees for an actor in a supporting role. Paul Racy in Sound of Metal. No, it's racy, but okay, I accept. You understand if uh, Ruben were to stay here, he'd have to do it on his own. It's still hard for me to even think about the morning that I was nominated, just like, it's very emotional. Um, after all these years, 
to be recognized, to, to have some, um, some kind of credibility established that, hey man, I've been here all this time. Have you had any moments of stillness? I was born in Chicago. I have deaf parents. Paul is a child of a deaf adult, of deaf adults. It's, stands for CODA, C-O-D-A. It's a ve very special place in our world. CODAs are born into the deaf world, and because of that, sign language, ASL, is their first language. Because you're right, Ruben. The world does keep moving. It can be a damn cruel place. I was about eight years old, watching Love Me Tender, and I quickly realized that my mom doesn't have access to what the story's about. I end up interpreting the whole movie. So I'm doing Richard Egan, Deborah Padgett, and Elvis Presley. And my mom was just enthralled. In about 1989, I decided to move out to uh, California, as all actors do, to pursue television and film. Deaf West Theater was founded in 1991 by a group of deaf actors who wanted to make good theater, not just for deaf people, but for everyone. And it's a very special place where deaf actors and hearing actors come together in a creative way in service of making theater. And the first show we did was the Steinbeck uh, great play of Mice and Men. And so I played George. The farmhands in the play were all deaf and the owner of the farm was hearing. It's just like my father growing up in the hearing world being oppressed. Without Deaf West Theater, I could not have kept up my acting chops. I think it's important that you stay here with us right now, Ruben. Did I know that uh, this was going to happen? No. Uh, of course, I fantasized about it. I even wrote on a small piece of uh, paper that uh, in this uh, little hotel that I had, I wrote my Oscar speech uh, down and just, you know, on a piece of paper about this big, and I still have it on my desk. Even if you don't believe it. <laughs> you gotta find it. You gotta find it inside yourself and believe that little spark that's still in there. You got to. And keep on going. Even if you don't believe it, say it out loud. Those <laughs> moments of stillness, that place, that's the kingdom of God. What an amazing story and great example of living life unscripted. And LAU wants to thank Benny and the beautiful Pantages Theater Hollywood for opening its doors to Paul, Deaf West, and of course, KTLA. During that shoot, Paul loved showing off his Dolce & Gabbana swag bag boots that were gifted to him. But you don't have to be an Oscar nominee to get free stuff. Right, Megan Tellis? We're at GBK Brand Bar inside of the Lapeer Hotel in West Hollywood. What do people need to know when it comes to gifting lounges for big award shows like the Oscars? This lounge in particular is all about health, wellness, awareness, and getting back to life. So the bags, worth how much? So the bag is actually worth over $60,000. We have, you know, this amazing artist, James Peter Henry, that's doing one of a kind pieces. We have. Jonathan Schultz, okay. who is creating a one-of-a-kind hand. They're gonna be giving their handprints. Oh. And this is all made out of 18 karat gold. Does each celebrity go home with a chair? It'll be shipped to them. Okay. It's mindful chair, and it's a meditation device that is heavenly. Of course, to be COVID friendly, yeah. we have our title sponsor here, Eon, and they're gonna be hand sanitizing all the celebrities when they come in. And then I see a lot of food products. For health and wellness, you know, we have a favorite of all the celebrities, OG Hot Sauce, and then Lucky Soul Drinks. We have Core Bars for those that are working out all the time. We have John Kelly Chocolates, and to go along with the chocolates, Realm is one of the top wineries in Napa Valley. We had to pour some wine for this because I want to reveal to the LA Unscripted fans right now, one of you is going to go home with a swag bag worth more than $600. Text LOUNGE to 515151. Again, the code word is LOUNGE. Good luck. And you know who never needs luck winning in the kitchen? Jessica Holmes.
One of the restaurants in LA where you are sure to see a celebrity is Nobu Malibu. It's very hard to get a reservation. It is one of the most beautiful restaurants in Los Angeles. There's a recipe on the menu, the crispy rice spicy tuna that people rave about. This is super simple. I got some spicy poke, tuna poke, and I got some regular tuna poke. So I'm gonna mix spicy and regular to kind of get a blend. So I pulse just a few times for the sushi rice or the sticky rice. You can't use like Uncle Ben's. It'll fall apart on you. It's really sticky. It's the kind of rice they have in sushi. I've got a nonstick pan and I'm gonna get that heated up with some coconut oil. And you're gonna make one fried rice patty. While that cooks, I'm gonna make that spicy mayo. So this is a Japanese mayo. It is a little different in the sense that I think it's slightly sweeter than regular mayo. And sriracha, that's it. A thin slice of jalapeno. Another thing to top, I'm gonna get some thin slices of avocado. Time to flip. We go like that. In it goes. Beautiful. Oh yeah, pretty. Just pile it up. Jalapeno, sesame seeds, our spicy mayo, and last but not least, I have a scallion here. The perfect Nobu knockoff for your Oscar Sunday. So do you guys think any Oscar nominees are actually eating anything today? Lowe's actually has a great spread and cocktails, so what do I say? Salud, Oscar Sunday, and thank you, Lowe's Hollywood Hotel, for going off script with us. Where will we be next? Stay tuned. Mmm, get in my belly.